space inside the car because it yeah. is, it's like, you know, it's a lot of space. You can actually make Italian hand gestures in here without that's, hitting maybe that's somebody. It. <laughs> <laughs> if you love classic cars, then Donald loves you. Today we're driving a 2015 Ferrari 458 Speciale. This is, when it was built, the fastest normally aspirated Ferrari the factory had ever made. The road car that lapped the Ferrari Fiorano test track, the fastest of any road car they'd made. And a car that incorporates so much of the racing technology, especially Formula One technology, in terms of active aerodynamics. And very sophisticated chassis control, all to bring an essential track experience to the road. And I'm joined once again by my colleague and friend, Mr. David Donahue. And uh, as a man who knows a bit about what it takes to have a successful race car, it's an interesting point again to see what this car, built for the street but optimized for the track, really means. <laughs> now, we were out in the uh, 430 Scuderia, and uh, I think both of us thought it was a very nice car. A car that we probably didn't want to spend a heck of a lot of time in, but the time you spend in it would be very entertaining. My initial impressions of this car is that it feels to me a lot lighter, just in terms of the controls and the way things uh, react. It's also a lot more comfortable. I think the ride is better. Definitely. Um, but it's very, very, very immediate. Maybe not so much for the track, the ride. Yeah. So, which is interesting because you know, with what this does, it's certainly, to me, and you will really, I won't say thrash it because we are not on a track. We are here on public roads, so we are always respectful and responsible, and uh, look out for what's going on around us. But it's also a very interesting thing to always see what kind of, of actual enjoyment can you get out of a car like this when you're driving it on sort of normal roads. Uh, my test of, of cars like this, and, and especially the cars that engage in the horsepower wars, you know, you get to 1,000 horsepower, 1,200 horsepower, and it's, you know, what do you do with that? You know, this is a car with less than 600 horsepower, but I think that cars like this are, to me, the ultimate because they do everything that you want a car to do in a way that is actually usable and interesting. Yeah, I think too much is put into horsepower numbers to, to make sales. I think that uh, some of the lower power cars you can have a whole lot more fun in just well, because you can be flat out and not have a proverbial gun to your head. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. and. Uh, me in old cars, and especially uh, the only racing I've ever done is in vintage racing, and my vintage racing is all done in small bore cars, and they're cars that, uh, some of which uh, I've had uh, great drivers and instructors tell me, well, Donald, you know, it, it's an interesting thing that, that you choose this car. Because in some cases where, as you well know, you want to sort of apply power in situations to get yourself out of trouble, if your foot's already on the firewall, <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> you hang on to that thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it makes you feel brave. Yeah. You're flat on the gas all the time. <laughs> Precisely. I uh, often joked that... Uh, when I drove some of my cars at a small track like Lime Rock, I only used the brakes once. 
all the rest of it was I simply lifted and that was it and otherwise it was all on the throttle all the time looking in the mirrors of course to make sure that uh, I could signal the people past me whenever I needed to but that would not be the problem for the driver of this car yeah the ride quality is definitely noticeable compared to the uh, 458 uh, sorry, 4, 430. The 430 Scuderia, yes. Yeah. And I wonder how much, obviously a lot of it is down to the actual damping and springs and all, but I also wonder if any of the effects of that suspension, the, the active aerodynamics in the car also affect that as well. That perhaps it can be more softly sprung because the car has more downforce? Does that make any sense or is that no, exactly I, I think this is probably targeted for a different customer than that car was. Mm -hmm. I think that car, the, the 30 was much more targeted to track specific. Um, not so sure this one is. Well, it's interesting um, because it is not the, uh, once again, the, the equivalent challenge car has less horsepower than this car, weighs a lot less, obviously, and I don't believe that it has the same kind of uh, suspension electronics that this car has. Different sound, for sure. Yeah. And it's really interesting, too, because I do like the... Uh, I do like the sound of this, and you know, you, you taught me so much just watching you driving the 430 about what you feel at the wheel and the instant left to right response and whether the car immediately recovers or not. And this car really, I mean, it's there. I'm very curious to see what your reactions are to that. But yet again, I feel sort of more connected to the road. I feel the road itself, I can almost feel the, the all the, uh, uh, where they patch the roads. Um, cracks? <laughs> yeah, but it's, not, <laughs> it's not so much the cracks as much the... Uh, the sealer? The sealer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely no need to uh, lift for the shifts in this. Yeah, they do seem more immediate. Yeah. Especially at the lower, lower acceleration levels. So is this dual clutch? Yeah, it's got to be. That's the difference. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, it makes a huge difference. Can't tell if you're being serious or not. <laughs> <laughs> the engine got louder. You didn't hear that. So of the active arrow, mm -hmm. what is active? Just the rear wing? Uh, no, it actually has uh, slip control, so it actually controls the amount of uh, torque to the wheel as you're going through a turn. So that would be torque vectoring? Mm -hmm. Torque vectoring, yeah. But on the aero side, it's just the rear spoiler? No, I think that there's actually some underbody stuff going on here as well. Mm -hmm. 